Good morning and welcome to worship from St Matthew's Church, Rich Hill. Uh, we're glad that you're able to join with us today and we pray that you will be blessed as we worship together. We begin with our Easter greeting. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Uh, good morning and I'm very glad to be with you in uh, um, St Matthew's Rich Hill. I'm sorry I haven't been able to get round really anywhere at all to meet people, to meet clergy and to meet lay people. But I'm hoping that just as soon as it's possible to do that uh, I'll be able to meet some of you. I hope you're keeping well with your families. Uh, I trust that you feel the presence of God very near to you if you're passing through any sort of difficulty. Uh, and I know that you will cast your cares on him who cares for you. Thank you to Archbishop John for joining us today for our Easter greeting. And we do look forward to welcoming him properly to St Matthew's uh, whenever we're able to. Uh, we do pray uh, God's blessing on Archbishop John as he begins his ministry among us, especially in these challenging days. This is the Sunday after the Ascension, as we celebrate that Jesus has been exalted to the highest place and given the name that is above every name, to whom every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Prophet Isaiah saw the Lord high and exalted on his throne in the temple. He heard the angels proclaim, Holy, holy, holy 
is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. In view of God's holiness, Isaiah was aware of his own sinfulness. And so we confess our sins to God as we echo Isaiah's confession. O King, enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In scripture we hear these words. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Father, we thank you for your grace, which forgives all our sins and restores us to life in you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Amen. We come to our Bible reading and Betty is going to read for us today. The reading is taken from Philippians chapter 2, reading from verses 1 to 11. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the other. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are exalted to the highest place. Show us your glory and speak your word to us, that we would confess you as Lord not only with our lips, but also in our lives, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
One of the key messages during this period of lockdown has been the reminder that we're in this together. It's why we've been following the guidance as best we can, not only to protect ourselves, but also to protect other people. If we all started to do our own thing, then the risk would be greater for everyone. And so we play our part in order to help and protect everyone else. We act for the good of others. In our Bible reading today, we discover that this attitude isn't just for periods of pandemic. This is the way Christians should live all the time. The life of a Christian will be a life of humility as we follow the Lord Jesus together. We're now in the main section of this letter to the Philippians. Whereas we saw last week, Paul is urging the Philippians to stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel. It's the image of Roman soldiers locking their seals together. The image of the rugby scrum pushing together. But how do we actually do this in the local church? How do we stand firm together? Perhaps you've heard uh, this little saying. Living above with the saints we love. Oh, that will be glory. Living below with the saints we know. Now that's a different story. So how do we live below with the saints that we know as we stand firm together. Well, first of all, Paul reminds us of all that we already have in common together. In verse 1, he makes four if statements. He says, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, If any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then, and we'll see what he goes on to in a moment. But he invites them to work through this checklist. And I invite you to do the same. These are some of the benefits and blessings that come from being a Christian. If you're not a Christian this morning. We're delighted that you're listening in and and you're with us today. Uh, But these could be yours if you turn to Jesus and trust him for yourself. So here's the checklist. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, yes. If any comfort from his love, yes. If any fellowship with the Spirit, yes. If any tenderness and compassion, yes. Uh, The Christians say yes, 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 yes. They have a, a full house. These are the benefits and blessings we have as Christians together. Have you realized all that you have received as you've trusted in Jesus? Are you grateful for it? Are you thankful for all that Jesus has given to you? Yes. So what now? Well, if you have all these, and you do, then Paul says, make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Just as we share in all the blessings together, so we are to share in this unity of mind, of love, of spirit and purpose together. Well, how do we do that? Paul tells us in verses 3 and 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Not selfish ambition, but humility. 
Not your own interests only, but also the interests of others. In other words, we're not to be about me first, but about you first. We've already seen an example of selfish ambition in Philippians chapter 1. Do you remember the people who were preaching about Christ out of envy uh, and rivalry, trying to stir up trouble for Paul? Paul says they were doing so out of selfish ambition. And I'm sure you can think of ways in which uh, this type of behaviour can happen. Uh, But rather than climbing over other people, using them to further our own desires and interests, We're to lift them up and look out for their interests too. This was something that the Philippians had to work at because they weren't already doing it. This unity through humility doesn't come naturally. It can only come supernaturally as the Spirit is at work in our lives. But if the Philippians were to be united through their humility, then it would make Paul's joy complete. And that word joy is a helpful reminder of our priorities when we live out this united through humility at church life. Joy, J-O-Y, Jesus, others, yourself. Up to now, Paul has reminded the Philippians of all they have already received at the if and urged them to live out this unity through humility at the then. But now in in the closing verses of our passage, he gives us the supreme motivation and the perfect example of this life of humility. There are words that are familiar to us because we've been using them as our creed in recent weeks. They would probably have been words that were familiar to the Philippians as well. It's thought that verses 6 to 11 are an early Christian hymn that Paul quotes. They set out what Jesus has done for us in achieving our salvation, but they're also an example to follow. Paul says, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. When you think of all that Jesus has done for us, it's all down, down, down. Someone has suggested that it could be summarised as the crown, the crib and the cross. First of all, uh, the crown. Uh, The Son of God, fully God, uh, didn't consider his divinity as something to be grasped or exploited. He who set the stars in place, who was used to the worship of angels, left his place in heaven and came down to earth. Why did he do it? Not for his own benefit, but for ours. He laid aside his crown to be born and laid in the crib made himself nothing, taking at the nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. The Son of God took on our flesh, God with skin on, to become one of us. Can you imagine at the depth of the descent for him to be able to do this? A few years back, there was an interview with Prince Charles on TV. And he recalled how whenever he was a small child, the royal family, whenever they were holidaying in Scotland, would anonymously get a boat 
and come across to Northern Ireland and drive to visit their friends at Barnes Court outside uh, Straban. No guards, no fanfare, just Prince Philip and the Queen and the family uh, driving along like normal people. But even that's a small comparison uh, to what Jesus did when he became one of us. And even that wasn't enough. He deserved to be served. But he did not come to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. And that was the final downward step. Death. Even death on the cross. Why did he do it? In order to save us. In order to bring us back to himself by taking our sins and bearing the punishment that we deserved. He was the humble king who went down, down, down. From crown to crib to cross. Because Jesus did all this, because he lived the perfect life of humility, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Having descended to the very bottom, God raised him to the very top, to heaven's throne. The name of Jesus is above every name in honour and value and worth. And while now you might hear his name used as a swear word or or a blasphemy, it will not be like that forever. One day, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you're a Christian today, you might have some of your friends or family wondering why you're still bothering to tune in to church. Why bother with all that stuff and with Jesus? But here we see just how precious the name of Jesus is to us. He who gave up all for us. How could we not give our all to follow him? He who humbly served us in order to save us. Who lavishes his blessings on us. How could we not gladly serve him? And follow in his footsteps. As we seek to learn his humility and stand firm with our brothers and sisters in Christ. If you're not a Christian today, then please look again at the Lord Jesus. He did it all for you. Perhaps you've been hurt by others. Perhaps you've even been hurt by the church by people seeking to take advantage of you and exploit you and use you for their own gain. The Lord Jesus is not like that. He is the humble king who gave himself for you. One day you will bow before him and confess that he is Lord. So why not do it today? Willingly, gladly, joyfully. Jesus, our Saviour, is also our example. As he calls us to rejoice in unity through humility. I'm going to read the prayer that I'm going to pray in a moment. And if you want to pray this too, to to make it your own, then say it either outwardly or inwardly with me the second time through. 
here's what I'm going to say. Lord Jesus, you have given yourself for me. I give myself to you as I bow my knee to you and confess that you are my Lord. Help me to follow you and by your spirit change me to be more like you, my humble King. Amen. If you want to pray that, then pray it with me now. Lord Jesus, you have given yourself for me. I give myself to you as I bow my knee to you and confess that you are my Lord. Help me to follow you and by your spirit change me to be more like you my humble king amen if you have prayed that prayer today then i'd love to be able to help you to think it through further and to live it out please do get in contact with me We declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us faith to know that as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, we stand amazed at your great love for us, that Jesus came to serve us and save us. We recognise our unworthiness and add our praise as we cry out, Worthy is the Lamb. Help us to never forget all that has been done for us as we live out our grateful thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you that you have called us to yourself and to one another in the family of your church. As we rejoice in your shared blessings to us, help us to pursue a life of unity through humility as we stand firm together. Increase our love for you and for one another. We ask your blessing on Archbishop John and all who serve the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for wisdom and patience while we continue to endure the current restrictions. Guide our political leaders as they weigh the evidence and decide on our next steps. Bless and protect all those who selflessly serve and bring them to know the Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, give your comfort to all who mourn and your healing to those who suffer. 
And Lord, hasten the day when we will see Jesus face to face, when all will bow before him and confess that he is Lord, to your glory and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we share in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give Give us this day day our daily bread. bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today. Uh, We hope that you have been blessed as we've worshipped together. If we can help in any way, then please don't hesitate to get in contact. You can find all of our latest updates and prayer diary on our church Facebook page. Christ, our exalted King, pour on you his abundant gifts. Make you faithful and strong to do his will that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing song proclaims that there is no other name but Jesus. No.
Jesus, Jesus.